Hey, it's Brenda Sue. I'm back again this week to talk about one of my favorite subjects. Um, recently on my Facebook, Be Sue Boutiques page, we've had a lot of sharing about collage jewelry. Uh, collage jewelry is something I know a lot about. That's where I started. I've done thousands of pieces in that style. And I'm really tickled to see that people are interested in doing it again. It's really not very hard to do. Um, it, you need some patience, basically. And you need some cool components, but we can fix you up with that. <laughs> anyway, and you also need the right glue. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about glue. And then I'm going to show you some of the past work that I still own and have and talk a little bit about the construction methods that I use. And from there on, then we'll do a series of videos that will explain to you how you can actually perform the work. And we're going to experiment with using this cool ice resin as a lacquer instead of the old treasure crystal coat that I used to use, which is full of benzene and not a bit good for you. I'm really into healthy these days as much as possible. So we're going to talk about glue. And talking about healthy, that is a problem because in glue there's not a lot of healthy that works. Some people think that you can make collage jewelry using a really good hot glue. No, you can't. What happens with hot glue is it expands and contracts with hot and cold. Summertime, it can melt. Wintertime, it can let go of stuff. It can pop stuff out. It doesn't hold properly. It can peel off. Hot glues for paper. Hot glue is a craft item. We're not doing crafts here. We're doing art. We want things that will hold up that our customers and our friends that we give these pieces to are going to enjoy for a long time. E6000 is your glue of choice, period, the end. I've used cases of it. Um, this is the size that we sell on the cat on the site. This is the size I like to use because it's just easier for me to manipulate it and keep it off my hands. And you want to do that because although it is the most marvelous glue for making jewelry collage, it is highly toxic. How sad, but it is. It's carcinogenic. So, your skin being your biggest organ in the body and the most permeable, you want to keep it off your hands. Do not eat while you use it. Have some air movement. Have some overhead exhaust. I've got it on here in the messy workshop today. I've got a fan blowing on me back here in case I decide to crack one of these open. I'm very sensitive to this. I've had cancer, so I don't want it again. So if you want to use this product, it's really the only thing that really works. And I believe you can use it safely. I have. Um, you just need to keep it off your hands, off your face, out of your mouth, off your skin, and don't breathe it. Don't hold the tube up by your face, you know, while you're using it. And when you're done, clean up well, and perhaps don't use it every day. Let your body detox a little bit. That's what the Poison Control Board says. And you should be okay. you got to use a quality product if you're going to do this. E6000 is it. For setting stones, you want to use hypotube cement. Why is that? Because E6000 likes to eat the foil off of foil back stones. So it's a crapshoot. If you put it in with E6000, whether down the road you're going to get spots on the back of your stone. If you do, it's because it's a chemical reaction. It's eating the foil off your stones. You don't want that? No good. Now, if you're really, really sensitive to the smell, E6000 is a little fumey. I have found that Crafters Pick the Ultimate is a non-toxic option. And it does work fairly well. I've made jewelry with this. I've made collage necklaces with this. I've made collage, heavily collage picture frames with it, earrings, stuff like that. Held up just fine. The problem with it is, is the cure time is very, very slow on this product, which we do carry at the site. Um, if you make a piece, you better let it set for at least a week, maybe two weeks before you proceed with it. And you know, you may not want to wait that long. 
Um, also, it's not going to be good for bracelets or rings because that that kind of jewelry takes a lot of bumping and abuse, and it is probably not going to hold up. But you know what? For earrings and necklaces, not a bad product. If you're sensitive, try this. It's not expensive. You get a big bang for your buck. There's like uh, eight ounces in here. Good to go. Give it a shot. It works. It's it's strong enough. But your Elmer's glue and your stuff like that is no good. There are two-part resin epoxy type things you can use. My friend Wendy Gell has used that a lot in her jewelry. She inspired me so much. Wendy, if you're watching this, thank you. Love you, honey. Um, she uses that and her jewelry has held up. It's one of the ways you can tell it's a Wendy piece and she hasn't signed it because of the type of glue. And I'll show you that in a minute. But anyway, a discussion of glues. Do not use hot glue. E6000 is the best. Care and caution with using it, please. Um, setting stones, hypotube cement, and for those who are very sensitive but who still want to have this wonderful experience of creating, try Crafters Pick the Ultimate. Not a bad second choice. So, Rob tells me we're already at six minutes on this video, so we're, this is definitely going to be a series, so you guys are going to have to hang in there with me. I'm going to try to make it really fun for you, but I'm going to show you kind of how I got started. Um, a lady from Florida that I knew, oh goodness, 20, over, well over 20 years ago, probably closer, 22, um, sent me a box of junk when I was dealing in antique jewelry, and she sent me this brooch that she made from an old spoon. So you talk about fond item art, it's been going on for a while. Steampunkin, it's been going on for a while. These are newer names. But Ruth made this for me. And you can see she's used a, a thick piece of cork here, glued a pin back on it. She's got an old spoon and just a bunch of chotch, a broken piece of jewelry here, a little ring. Good movement, good flow to this. Um, it's a really big brooch, but Ruth always liked really big things. I do not know what kind of glaze she used in this, and a little bit of it has broken out through the years, but um, it's just a really wonderful, fun piece, and it really piqued my imagination. And not long after Ruth sent this to me, and I started playing around a little bit, I found out about Wendy Gell, who was had become really quite famous. And she was famous for her wristy cuffs and her glitz collage. These are a pair of Wendy Gell earrings. I've had these for a long, long time. But see how she would just take and put the, the raw stones out of the mount. She would just glue them together and she would use a two-part epoxy. Quite durable. These are really old. Um, but you can kind of tell these are Wendy pieces because of the backs. You can see the yellowing of the epoxy. And most of the old, old Wendy pieces were signed in, in script. She used a Dremel, much the way I have done mine since. Um, she signed them Wendy Gill. Actually, I'm lying. Here's a little pad. She, these are, I don't know if you can see it. It's a commercial pad that she had made, and then she would glue to this. is Wendy Gill. It's her signature there. Um, but she sold her, her stuff. She had a lot of celebrity, celebrity clientele. She still does. She still does stuff. I think she had a tiara she made for Vera Wang not too long ago. But anyway, uh, Wendy inspired me so much, and I was so thrilled to eventually um, get to know Wendy and be friends with her. And, and she's an amazing, amazing creative woman. I don't know anybody who is more creative than my friend Wendy. But anyway, here is a pair of earrings that, that I made. Uh, I would say around 98. These stones are, now Wendy's are all wonderful old Swar Swarovski glass, but mine are acrylic. And that, I like that for earrings because they're lighter on your ears. But you can see that I took a brass stamping, I think we still sell this, or something similar anyway, that had piercings in it. And I hung some little beadies, you can see. And of course this kind of earring really needs to be a clip, it's just too heavy to be pierced. And then I turned it, you know, this way, kind of diagonally, and did my collage. And I always start with the big pieces first. So I would have placed this, then this, then this. And then I would fill in with leaves and pearlies, and then end up taking a little strand of rhinestone chain and applying it around the edge, and maybe adding a couple little flatbacks here and there for some flash. 
But I actually kept these earrings. I didn't realize I still had them. I was looking for things to show you today. But that's pretty much how I did it. And this, these are done with E6000. And you can see they're still shiny and nice and looking good and sturdy as can be. Throw them down. They're fine. So anyway, we're going to conclude this video and pop up with another one where I'm going to show you some of the components that I use to do collage and um, some more old pieces of work that I still have, and we'll take it from there. I hope you're enjoying this.